Recording. I need a GoPro myself. Wendy's gonna GoPro you right now. No, I need to go on my head. Oh. You can still do it. Okay. okay, here we are. It's actually the next morning. And I'm coming out to pull this fish off. Okay. And you might be thinking, oh my stars, that looks totally burnt. That is not totally burnt. That is actually exactly how I like it. And if you've ever tried my fish, perhaps it's how you like it as well. But coming out of the smoker, it is pretty darn hot. So I'll set these guys out here for a little bit to cool. Put them in gallons of black bags just for our trip home. Uh, we're in Kenai right now at my sister-in-law Colleen and brother-in-law Chris's place. And we will <clears throat> process these, finish processing them the rest of the way when we get back to Anchorage. Usually what we do is put them in freezer bags vacuum freezer bags so the packages of, with, with uh, maybe three or four fillets in each bag vacuum them down and uh, chuck them in the freezer I should note, not all these smokers are the same. This old totem smoker here is pretty old. It doesn't create near the heat that the Big Chief does. So these guys are still, I don't know, maybe a little bit moister than really what I prefer, but that's okay. They're gonna be, they're gonna be fine. I kind of squeeze them. You can see how this guy's still got quite a bit of moisture left in him. That's fine, it's it's good, but compared to some of these that almost look black. Yeah, they're gonna be good. And it's pretty cool out this morning, so these guys are already drying up nicely and cooling off so ziplock freezer time Sometimes the skins have a tendency to stick to the grate in the smoker. Some people use Pam on them or vegetable oil or something. I don't. I just kind of wrestle with them.
Yeah. See what I mean? There you can kind of see the fish. This is a pretty moist piece yet, but it's it's cured. This would this would keep a long time in the refrigerator. We freeze them and they keep for years in vacuum bags. If you're curious as to how many fish worth of tails we're looking at here, I think it was uh, 43, 43 fish. Of course, two tail sections off each fish. Morning, Chris. I know. I, I went in the bathroom in my bare feet and damn near burnt my feet. And the in-floor heating is kicking ass. Shake it all off again. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Nice and uh, nice and dry, most of them. This is more of the, you'll hear some people call this like the squaw candy or whatever. I've also got this camera running, by the way. Because I'm a dork. Do you go into the store? so much when you tell me that. <laughs> it's all good in theory. Yeah. You'll notice these are all kind of curled up on the ends when we uh, let these guys cool down and put them in the vacuum bags. They'll flatten right out and it'll kind of squeeze the oil out of them into the vacuum bags and that will eliminate any air and they won't freeze or burn. Okay, I got four bags worth. There you have it, smoked uh, sockeye, or also known as red salmon, tails, ready to be vacuum bagged. Okay, what I got here is some de-skinned fillets that I've soaked in a really mild brine. I'm going to try something new this year. Uh, let, them, let them smoke overnight in this brine, which is basically just a little bit of salt, brown sugar, dry white wine. And I'm going to take these guys, pat them dry, and smoke them for just one pan in the smoker. And then we're going to jar them and see how they turn out. I'm hopeful, but who knows? Never tried it before. They'll get cut into smaller pieces, of course, before they go into the jars for canning, jarring, canning, whatever. <laughs> Yuck.
Yikes. So I got all these guys on racks. I'm going to carry them out to the smoker. Load them in there and just kind of let them dry for a little bit with the door open. And then once they get a little bit tacky, put some smoke on them and close the door. Check on that fish that's in the smoker. I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out of it. Get us at a proper angle here. I'm thinking most of the chips are burned up. We'll take a look. Oh yeah. It's pretty much done. Let's not dump these onto my foot. And we'll unplug this guy from Mr. Power Strip and take the door off. We'll let that fish cool down and then it should be ready to jar once Colleen and Gwendy. Ow! Hot door! Hot door! Once uh, Colleen and Gwendy get the uh, jars ready. Yeah, that's the plan. I don't know if I got a good look at that or not. Looks kind of dark on my camera, but there's the fish. Lightly smoked, one pan of, what did I use? Smokehouse Alder chips. To my jarred smoked salmon, I'm going to add, using Clayton's trusty K-Bar, I think, uh, breast cancer awareness knife. And you put some uh, habaneros in each jar. And I think these guys were red Anaheims, but... I don't remember. But the habaneros. I'm just gonna do a few jars with these and just one habanero per jar. And see what that does. If it makes them so spicy nobody can eat it, I'll send them to my brother Mikey. Because Mikey likes it hot. Ooh, them dudes even smell hot. So my wife and Gwendy, or my wife Gwendy and my sister-in-law Colleen seem to think that a little bit of garlic might be a good idea. So, hey, what do I know? A little CPR on some cloves of garlic here. Remember, Rapid compressions. Breathe, breathe. We're gonna bring this dude back from the dead, I can tell. Oh, I just crushed that one bad. When you got a thumb that bends like this, it's pretty handy for crushing garlic. I know, everybody's jealous. Scott, I wish my thumb could be like that. Okay, I was just informed, or did the math, and figured out that a case of jars is comprised of, let's see what we got here, 12 jars. Mr. Dewey Decimal System, or metric boy here was thinking a case was 10. 
case is not, case of 12. So I got my 12 jars laid out here. I had to further dice up my habaneros because I had exactly 10 of them. And I'm a big enough OCD freak that having two jars out of the case with no habaneros was going to be no bueno. So, <clears throat> almost ready for that. And yes, sorry friends, it's day drinking time. Won't be any driving. All we're doing is playing with food, so should be fairly harmless. There is some knife work to be done, so there's always the potential for that, but I think we're going to be fine. I've been told that uh, eighth of a teaspoon of salt should probably work pretty well for this. We already had this fish soaking in a brine that consisted of mm, a little bit of salt, not very much. I think I put a quarter cup to maybe a gallon of liquid. So there was some salt already in it, not a lot. I've been told when they're doing the plain fish, they use a half teaspoon. So we'd rather go a little less than too much because you can't take saltiness away yeah okay, that's good we're using morton's all natural canning and pickling salt which seems to have a leak from the bottom that's rather inconvenient <clears throat> okay well i guess i'm just gonna wing this I don't know what I'm doing. I've been talking to my brother Mike via text. He has volunteered to be the guinea pig for the habanero garlic smoked fish trial run here. And he'll either have really awesome fish or he'll have a dozen jars to dump out in the garbage can. I'll probably keep one for myself and just to give it a try because, you know, hey, gotta try it, right? Wow, that might be a lot of garlic. I don't know. I've been told it's good for you. So we're gonna go with that. More is better. And have an arrow action. You get one. Yeah, garlic made my finger sticky. Who's light? That guy, maybe not. Oh, missed. For sure. Ooh, that guy's a little bit light. That guy's light. Okay, well they are not even close to being evenly distributed at all. But you know what? We'll make up for that with these dudes. Which I think these were the Anaheims. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting over a cold, that's why I'm kind of huffing and puffing and that and I'm fat. But, uh, yeah, it's not like lifting peppers is a lot of physical effort here, but. I am trying to make an effort at evenly distributing this throughout the jars, albeit not a very scientific one. We've got all different kinds of sizes and shapes here. There you go. Yeah, you can have another one. Okay, good enough. We have our 12 jars. They have each got an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, some garlic, habaneros, 
and what I believe to be Anaheim peppers, chilies, whatever. And I'm pulling off my fillets. 